Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. Uh, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, have an opportunity to call into the radio station with your Bible question or comment and receive Bible answers to your Bible questions. This broadcast is sponsored by the Church of Christ that meets at Wilson Road. The location of the building where the Wilson Road Church of Christ meets is 510 Wilson Road, located in Humble, Texas. Zip code is 77338. If you would like to make personal contact with someone from the Wilson Road Church of Christ, phone number to call is 281-446-1867. The Wilson Road Church of Christ has also implemented a website where you can pull up the doctrine and the teachings of Christ, and that web address is www.wilsonrdforroadchurchofchrist.com. Uh, you can also pull up these uh, radio station programs, as we have our brother Javier in the studio, recording uh, each segment that we do at Wilson RD for Road uh, COC, as well as on the YouTube. You can also pull it up. When you pull up Wilson RD COC on the YouTube website, you can pull up uh, this uh, radio program as well as past radio programs as well. Again, we have uh, three gospel preachers on the panel this afternoon, ready and able to give you book, chapter, verse for all your Bible questions. We have our brother Dwayne Hamilton, who is of the Wilson Road Church of Christ. I am Henry Stevenson, uh, one of the ministers to the Goose Creek Church of Christ here in Baytown, Texas. And we have brother Stephen Ozan, the preacher to uh, the Wilson you Road Church. You believe what you hear, but it's what you hear from the Word of God. Now, the Apostle Paul writes to the saints in Rome, chapter 10, and verse 17, he tells us how faith comes. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Let me say that again. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing comes by the word of God. Now make no mistake about it, radio listeners, if you're going to have a right faith, which there's only one of, that faith or that belief must be based upon the Word of God. And so you believe what you hear, but is what you hear from the Word of God. Now at this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss it to our brother Dwayne Hamilton to elaborate on our subject this afternoon. Brother Hamilton. God bless you, my brother. I'd like to also personally welcome the radio audience. Uh, you know, this, this, this uh, topic that we're discussing uh, is nothing new. Uh, we've, we've discussed it roundabout in, in various lessons that we've had on, on the program over the years. Uh, but it's one that, that, that people really need to understand. That, you know, I, I, I can speak for myself and I believe uh, the other brothers as well. And oftentimes when we're talking to people about the gospel, you often hear people say, you know, well, uh, you know, my, 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 pre my pre they always talk, they always validate their points based on something someone else said. Someone told them, their uncle, or their, 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 their uh, teacher, or, or their, their preacher, or, uh, or their, their grandmother, or auntie, or whatever. And the, the, the response is always, now where do you find that in the Bible? That's the response that's given by the gospel teacher. And, 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 very, and very seldomly do they ever have a scripture to go to, to quote why they believe what they believe. So they believe something but what, but what they believe is, is, is nowhere found in the scriptures. If it is, it's, it's a scripture that's taken out of its content. And now we understand the Bible is clear that God's not the author of confusion. Uh, most of, a lot of people like to quote that scripture. Uh, and, but you have to believe it to be true. And, and if, if God hadn't told me one thing and told you something different, yeah. he has one word that he has given and that one word has to be followed and obeyed. Amen. It's, it's not, it's not, it doesn't contradict itself as people uh, claim that it doesn't, but profess uh, that it does by their actions and what they believe. So I want, I want to look at uh, an example uh, in the Bible uh, of God giving a man instructions, somebody else coming along and selling, uh, saying otherwise, and let's see what happened to that man. Now we're looking at 1 Kings chapter 13. <clears throat> 1 Kings chapter 13. And I want to uh, start with uh, I want to start with verse seven uh, for the sake of time. Uh, this is this was a, a man of God. The Bible calls him that went to King Jeroboam, uh, and he, and he told him some things that God had told him to tell uh, Jeroboam. Now uh, here in verse seven, 
after after these words were shared, uh, at first the king didn't like it very much. He tried to put his hands on his hand with it, and, and the man of God prayed to God that his hand be restored, and such was the case. Verse 7, then the king said to the man of God, come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. But the man of God said to the king, if you were, if you were to give me half your house, I would not go in with you. Nor would I eat bread nor drink water in this place. He's going to give the reason why. Verse 9. For so it was commanded me by the word of the Lord, saying, You should not eat bread nor drink water, nor return by the same way you came. So he went another way and did not return by the way he came to Bethel. Now, instructions have been given to him by God that he is not to eat bread, he is not to drink water with anybody, nor is he to go back the same way uh, that he came into the city. So he, so right now he's following the instructions that God has given them. Verse, verse 11. It says, now an old prophet dwelt in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the, that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he spoke to the king. And their father said to him, which way did he go? For his sons had seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. Then he said to his son, saddle, saddle the donkey for him. So they saddled the donkey for him and rode on him and went after the man of God and found him sitting under, under an oak. Then he said to him, Are you the man of God who came from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said to him, Come home with me and eat bread. Now God has already given him instruction. He's been very clear on what God has told him at this time. Verse 16, And he said unto him, I cannot return with you, nor go in with you, neither can I eat bread nor drink water with you in this place. For I have been told by the word of the Lord, You shall not eat bread nor drink water there, uh, nor return by going the way you came. Verse 18. Now this, but before I go, now this man, he says he's all he is a he's also a prophet. And that's what he claims. He he said he says that, uh, and his desire is for this man to come and eat with him. Maybe he has good intentions. Maybe he says, well, he's 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 a believer. He he he's he's a he, he's a prophet of God too. He did a good job. I want to come here, come sit down and have a meal with. Him. Maybe maybe that maybe that's his desire. Now, but God has already spoken and given the the man of God instructions on what he is to do. Now because. Uh, this prophet has selfish uh, has a selfish desire. Check out what he's going to say in verse eighteen. <clears throat> he he said to him, "I too am a prophet as you are." And an angel spoke to me by the word of the Lord, saying, "Bring him back with you to your house, that he may eat bread and drink water." Now check this out. He was lying to him. Mm. Uh, you may you may read, but he lied. Now, I I really want you to understand, really grasp this. Because this person was supposed to be a prophet of God, or that's what he, that so so called. He, he said he's a prophet. Now, God has already spoken to the man of God and given him specific instructions on what he is supposed to do. However, because of this man's selfish ambitions or selfish desires, he has lied to this man and told him that an angel came from heaven and told him to tell him that God said, "Come and eat with me. Come, come eat with him." That's that's what he told the man of God. Now, it's no different than when. You have people in your pool, of people standing up and saying that God told me to tell you that it don't matter what church you go to. It don't mm -hmm. matter, uh, 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 you know, baptism, the, the baptism doesn't say. I'm telling you that all you have to do is believe and confess. Now, they may, I'm not sure what their intentions are, however, it is clear that God has not said this. And that's why we always ask a question on this program. Where is your scripture for that? When people call into the program, we ask a question. Where is your scripture for that? Number one, because we don't want to end up like this, oh, like this man of God is about to end up. We're going to read it in just a minute. We personally don't want to end up that way. Number one. Number two, for the sake of those that are listening, we don't want you to be duped into just believing any other thing that will cost you your soul. Because you understand, God is serious about the instruction that he's given. He told the man beforehand what he was supposed to do, uh, how he was supposed to, what, what, he was, what, what he was supposed to do, and what he was not supposed to do. He, he gave specific instructions on that before the man went out. He understood those instructions because he, 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 he has said twice already what God has already told him to do. Now, this other man decides, wants him to come eat with him, and he lies to him, tells him what God said or what God told, what some angel told him to tell him. But now we're going to see if, if God honors this. We say, well, he said an angel, so I'm not going to be mad because he thinks that an angel told him. So I'm not going to be mad at him. I'm not going I'm I'm, I'm I'm to let it go. Like we had a caller uh, last week talking about uh, saying that we were being contentious or whatever, you know, uh, because we we're trying to point out uh, truths of the Bible, basically. 
you know. And so now we're going to see if God has that same mentality here to say, well, or, or the analogy was used, if you're trying to catch fish, it don't matter what bait you use. Oh. Now we're going to see if God has the same, same, same mentality here. Because now this man has just lied. The man of God d didn't hear the angel talk to him. The man has professed that I too am a prophet. So if the man of God believes that he's a prophet, then of course angels would talk to him and tell him stuff. So then why would he, why, why would, why would he not believe it? Well, I I'll give you the answer first, and then we're going to read it, because God has already spoken. That's why. Now, we're going to continue Amen. reading on verse 19. Oh. So he went back with him and ate bread in his house and drank water. Verse 20. Now it, came, now it happened, as they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came to the prophet who had brought him back. And he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord. Now God is speaking to the, to, the, to the prophet, the old prophet that lied. Now he's speaking. Because you, have, because you have disobeyed the word of the Lord and not kept the commandment which the Lord your God commanded you, but you came back and ate bread and drank water in the place of which the Lord said to you, Eat no bread and drink no water. Your corpse shall not come to the tomb of your fathers. So it was after he had eaten bread and after he had, after he had drunk that he sat out the donkey for him. The prophet whom he had brought back, when he was gone, a lion, a lion met him on the road and killed him. And his corpse was thrown on the road, and the donkey stood by it, and the lion also stood by the corpse. <clears throat> now we see clearly, and, and I want to point out this also. The word of the Lord came and, and spelled out his doom for him uh, by the mouth of the old prophet that had already lied. Now, the man, of, the, the man of God still had time to gather up his thing, saddle up his donkey, finish his, finish his bread, and finish the water he wasn't supposed to eat. And he, find, he, he, he began on his, on his journey. And as he was going, then he met then then he met his he met his end. He was doomed. And it's just no different than people today have been told lies, uh, and and they live their lives. They go. You may have went to church today at, at, at some some false place, and you heard a false message, and you said amen to it, and, and you hear this message, and you say I don't care. You continue to live. You go to. We may even go to work Monday. Go to work Tuesday. Have a good. You come home and, and pet, uh, pet your dog, uh, kiss your children. You know, uh, hug your wife. Watching TV, you know, watch watch the game you're waiting to watch and all that, but best believe that at there's going to come a time when your corpse will be laid up somewhere, and God has already said if you have not done what I've told you, done with, because you have not done what I've commanded you, you will die. Not only will you die the physical death, which all of us will die, but more importantly, you're going to die the spiritual death because you did not keep the commandments that the Lord God has already given for all men to 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 be obeyed. Now, the question is always asked, why do we say these things on this program? Why do you always talk about the same stuff over and over again as it's perceived to be? Well, it's because God is very specific on what he has said to do. Just as he didn't spare this, this prophet that went and, and did, that he did the first part of what God told him to do, but he didn't do the second part. And God spared, did not spare him. He died because he did not keep the commands of the Lord. And that's the warning that we're trying to give to all the men and women who are listening to the program now, is that make sure that you have obeyed the doctrine and the gospel of Christ and not the gospel of, of your preacher or of your or your or your family member or your friend or somebody else that that that's teaching you something that God has not said. We've said several times, ask questions. If you don't ask you you just believe so just because you want to believe like the man of God did, you're gonna be dead and you're gonna die just like he died. Because God is not gonna spare. God has already been clear. He, he, all, these, all, all this information in this Bible, all these words pinned down by inspired men to get you ready for the judgment, God didn't plan. He's given you everything that you need according to 2 Peter chapter 3, uh, uh, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3 that pertain to God, life, and godliness. God is not kidding around. He's already given the instructions just like he gave to the man of God. Now it's up to you and up to me to keep those commandments and, we, and, and, just add, and he's already given us an example of what's going to happen if we don't keep those commandments. The number to call 281-837-2222. God bless you, brother. Man, God bless. This is a wonderful day to be alive and to hear the word of God. And uh, we thank both Henry and Dwayne for wonderful openings and good meat for us to work from. Now, if you've been paying attention to this and how it's laid out, you would know that you hear these stories all the time. But let me show you something, if you will. Look at Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, and you're going to find a somewhat similar, only in our realm of understanding, on Christianity. Galatians 1, 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ 
unto another gospel. Now notice, Paul has taught the Galatians. Paul has found out they have gone into a mixture of Christianity and Judaism. Like many of you, you tithe. That is of the law. You adhere to the lessons of tithing, the year of tithings, but you cannot, and many of you will never even go to Jerusalem. If you did, you will find out the temple doesn't even exist, nor is there a priesthood to give the tithe to. But you believe the lie of your minister who tells you that you are to give the tithe. And some of you in the church of Christ, you teach the same thing. And some of you are really slick in the church of Christ by calling it 10%. It is the same. A eight-year-old child, once you show him 10 and 10th mean the same thing and tithe, he will forever know 10% is the same as the 10th part of the tithe. But you're getting in your car every day. You're eating bread, drinking water, living. You're not riding donkeys. You're getting in cars. And, and at your end, you too will die lost, friend. But the idea is that Paul has found out that they are observing days, certain days, dealing with religious preferences, the Sabbath day. Many teach that. You have many going around serving the Lord's Supper on Saturday, saying that, well, Sunday actually starts at Saturday Sun. Set, but that we're not on that calendar because that was a calendar given only to the Jews. Only do you find that calendar given to the Jews where a day starts at sunset. And so why would you do that? Because you heard it in Judaism. Seventh-day Adventists and other sects, they do that. Now I want to read verse 7, Galatians 1 still, 1-7, which is not another. There is not another gospel. So as this man shouldn't have been confused. He had already heard God's word. But now you know what the sad part about the lesson is, if you miss it. When the prophet did speak, as Brother Alder pointed out, he was speaking now of God. But wait a minute, audience, listen. What did he do? Merely repeat what the man of God had already told him. If you eat with somebody or drink water in this land, you will die. Now that's like us coming and telling you and other gospel preachers and teachers about the truth. And then when you find out at death, standing before the temp before the throne of God, that you're going to die eternally forever, be destroyed, and your eyes will be woken, you will be tortured and tormented forever. That'll be like you being that man of God that didn't listen. And that is because if even one of your own were to just to repeat the message that you're going to die lost, it doesn't help you unless you repent, be baptized, and be added to the Lord's kingdom. So now look what he says here. He says in the next part, but there'll be some which trouble you, would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, look at verse 8 carefully, are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be a curse. Now look at the thrust of this. Let me tell you how important verse 9. As we said before, before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than you have received, let him be a curse. Curse will be damnation. For though I, or do I not persuade men or God, or do I speak to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So now listen to this. Paul says the message he preached is so powerful, he can't come back and change it himself. Let me tell you something, friends in this audience. This gospel that we have taught is so powerful, it overrides us. If we get on this airwave next week and change this, I'm telling you not. Turn your radio off till 4 o'clock and turn it back on because we have lost our minds. And we are on our way to hell. Somebody has put something in our pocket or in our heart. Because you will never see this program change its theme from using the gospel message in the Bible that is easily read by the eyes of people like you called human beings. All you got to do is open your Bible or listen to the radio. And you will see 
when you write down the scriptures we've quoted, it's still in the Bible, and it was in the Bible before your minister lied against it. The number to call is 281-837-2222. We have a caller, and we are ready to receive that call. Caller? Hello, caller. Go ahead. You're live. Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, I have a friend. I've been trying to kind of talk with them, and they've been trying to tell me that because uh, I'm new, I'm new in the ministry. I'm new, uh, trying to catch on to the gospel, and I listen to your station, and I, and I appreciate the information that I'm receiving. And they're trying to instruct and tell me that Jesus uh, is actually. Michael, the archangel, oh, not talking about the way I've been reading and listening to you on the gospel station, but I've never heard that, you know, since you brought up the angel, but is there a scripture I can show to them and point to them where they're wrong? Because I don't want to, I don't want to have damnation on me, and I'm trying to save a friend from trying to teach me something wrong, even though they've been in it longer than I have. Yes, sir, if you will, turn your Bible to Hebrews. These brothers may have some other scripture, but uh, if you have your Bible, you have a notepad, you can mark this down. Hebrews chapter 1, and if you'll be so kind, you'll look at verse 4. It says, being made so much better than the angel. That means he's not an angel. As he had by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. The they separating him from being angelic host. For unto which of the angels said he had at any time, which would mean if Jesus was an angel and he said this to him, then God would have dropped the ball and made a mistake and said, oh, I forgot my son is an angel, which is impossible. So he says, thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee again. I will be a father and he shall be to me a son. So it's clear right there. He never said this to any of the angels. Uh, and therefore, because Jesus is not an angel, Jesus is designed not to be an angel. Look at the second chapter, if you will. A uh, second chapter, again, of Hebrews. And uh, he says, uh, verse 14, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, watch this, angels are not flesh and blood. Watch this, angels are not flesh and blood because they cannot inherit heaven having flesh and blood so so hebrews 2 and 14 he says uh for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood he also himself likewise took part of the same that though that through death he might be destroyed he might destroy him that had power of death that is the devil and he says and deliver them through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage for verily he took not on him the nature of angels y'all see that verse he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham, which means he is a human being. And then you go up a little further, as one of the brothers has pointed out to me in verse number 7. Look at this. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels. Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things under him. He left nothing that is not him. But now we see not yet all things put on them. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So therefore it is emphatically clear Jesus is not an angel, never was an angel. He was created in the image of a man to be made lower than the angel, to suffer death. Through death he would destroy him who had power over death. That is Satan. So his, his, his father said, I will not make you to be like an angel. I will give you flesh and blood like your physical brethren of whom you shall rule. So therefore, we hope and pray. Now, our brothers have some other things to throw in here. I just want to uh, say to the caller, first of all, I, I, the way you sound, I hope that if you're not, that you become a member of the Church of Christ. Amen. Uh, this guy you're Amen. dealing with, is, is, he's a bunch of fooling. But you, you have really validated our topic for today. Uh, in that you could have believed what you heard and just ran with it. But if what you believe you hear, is it from the Word of God? And that's what we're challenging people to do. I'm glad that you call in Amen. because what we're giving you is not our opinion. 
We are showing you what the Bible says. But there are many people who would have received this message from this false preacher who just said that my Jesus was just the Archangel Michael, and they would have ran and spread it, that lie all over the, their home and the neighborhood and even in their, in their towns, and it would have been a false doctrine. And so the point we're making is you need to validate what you hear by the Word of God. You believe what you hear, but is what you hear from the Word of God? And the answer to that question about is Jesus the Archangel Michael, the answer is no. And we have validated that by the Scripture. The number of the call is 281-837-2222. Amen. Praise God. You know, I want to point out one more Scripture, too. Uh, to show 2 Corinthians 11 real quick and one of my brothers will close us out 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 2 uh, there are many ways to lie on Jesus and he won't do anything about it until judgment day trust me uh, you'll be just like the man who, that man ate every crumb of bread and drank every spot of water got on the donkey and got ate up by the line you will enjoy your Mercedes you'll enjoy your Pintos you'll enjoy your mansions and your apartments and your tents you'll have babies You'll send them to college, and they'll take care of you when you're old. And when you die, the line of Judah will tear you up at the judgment. And that's what we don't want for you, friend. That's what we don't want. 2 Corinthians 11 and 2. For I'm jealous over you with godly jealousy, or I've espoused you to one husband, and I present you a chaste virgin to Christ. But I feel that by any means the servant should beguile you as through his subtlety, as he did Eve, so shall your mind be corrupted to the simplicity that is in Christ. Now look at this. This is the thing you got to understand. For if he cometh unto you, he preach another Jesus. Say, how is that possible? I'll tell you something different about Jesus. Like the Mormons. That he came to America, which is a lie. And Amen. preached, which is a lie. Jesus never left out of the Middle East area. And he says that based on all the world lived there. Now, if you Amen. found scripture, then we just need you to call and tell us. So, therefore, that's another Jesus. Of uh, this Jesus that saved separate from baptism, taught in the Baptist, Catholic, Methodist church. That's another Jesus. You see, the Muslims that say Jesus is a prophet and that he co cohabitates and deals with Muhammad. The Muslims are a lie. That's Amen. another Jesus. Amen. And so he says, whom we have not preached, or uh, if you receive another spirit, Another spirit, the spirit that says, uh, I can heal you, and you can't never get your grandmother's eye to see right. <laughs> your uncle leg won't get right. It's almost better, but not right yet. But you took him to the hill, and he have not got well yet. Amen. See, that's a different spirit in that person, Amen. which you have not received or another gospel. Good news, you can be saved in denominationalism. All false teaching, he says, Amen. which you have not received. You know what he said? Even a Christian. He said, you might well bow with him. And now some in the churches of Christ have let preachers come in and teach 10%. You let the preacher bring in that anniversary, anniversary. date, which he mm. calls now Ministers Appreciation Day. Mm. You know what's funny about that? You can't find neither term in the Bible. That's the only problem wrong with it. Amen. Neither one of them in the Bible. Just like being saved without baptism is not in the Bible. Saints of God. Get that preacher off that throne for you and he die lost. Amen. Now, Amen. Through, if you believe the Amen. gospel, you've heard it, you decide to change, you confess Jesus, Son of God, you be baptized in water to have your sins removed by the Holy Ghost without the use of water, which he'll use the blood of Christ. He'll give you his spirit all in the water. You'll be added to the church of Christ while you're still in the water. When you come up, you are a Christian. No testimony needed. You are as saved as the man that dipped you in the water. And you live a faithful Christian life, Revelation 2.10, God will save you at the end. This is God's message to you because he loves you, although many spit in his face to this day. We leave the faithful saints of Romans 16.16. 16. The churches of Christ salute you.